श्री श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरंगा श्री प्रभात की जय हरे कृष्णा सो वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर अवर सैटरडे स्पिरिचुअल फ्रीक्वेंसीज वेर वी डिस्कस वंडरफुल ट्रांसेंडेंटल नेक्टर ऑन सैटरडेज एंड टुडे वी हैव वेरी वेरी फॉर्चुनेट टू हैव द एसोसिएशन ऑफ इज ग्रेस अभिनव गौरंगा प्रभु सच माई फॉर्चून uh to uh to uh, uh glorify prabhu and introduce prabhu to this forum prabhu is not new prabhu has taken several sessions for icf forum but um uh, for my uh, purification and for the pleasure of uh, all the devotees let me uh, quickly give a short introduction and then i'll hand over to prabhu his <clears throat> grace abhinav gorang prabhu joined us con in august 2020 during the covid time right so many people uh, have joined but How is Abhinav Prabhu different? Hmm? Let's see here that, right? Uh, so in uh, in like four years time, this is what Abhinav Prabhu has grown. You know, uh, in Bhagavad Gita also, uh, you know, Krishna says those who have not just completed, they just get into Krishna consciousness, then they advance. So like that. So let's read. Uh, let's uh, hear about this day's Abhinav Gorang Prabhu. He joined us on in August twenty twenty during the COVID time. Mercy of Guru and Goranga. Hmm? He says he himself says. he was able to make steady progress right immediately after that prabhu ji completed his bhakti shastri very very difficult to complete bhakti shastri course i know people who are you know giving multiple attempts and all that prabhu ji immediately he cleared his bhakti shastri in 2022 within two years of joining iskon right we know bhakti shastri in entails four important books nectar of devotion nectar of instruction um, bhagavad gita and isha upanishad right to understand these four books prabhupad said Uh, you can become you become a bhakti shastri means you can, you will become a very uh, wonderful preacher because you have understood whatever prabhupad is given in the four important books that uh, enables us to understand krishna tatva so prabhu ji completed it within two years of joining iskon prabhu ji got initiated from his holiness lord jay patak swami sri guru maharaj in october 2023 prabhu ji is uh, currently based out of iskon whitefield and prabhu ji is entering services of uh, being a part of the media team there and uh, responsible for video editing and poster creation for the various programs and that at the center and prabhu ji also runs his own geeta course uh, every day evening 5 pm so if devotees are free you may join in prabhu ji may share the link uh, and uh, prabhu ji is working uh, for a renowned in, uh, industrial software company as a senior developer uh, prabhu ji uh, is married and uh, uh, is a father of a 10 year old daughter so that's in a nutshell about prabhu ji so we welcome all the devotees for a very wonderful transcendental session we welcome his grace abhinav goranga prabhu by quickly loudly chanting the hare krishna maha mantra hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram 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 hare 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 krishna prabhu over to you hare bol thank you thank you so much mata ji i mean i do not deserve this kind of a glorification but yeah it's a part and parcel of you know this uh, all the sessions that we do <laughs> so we have to go with that but yes i mean it's all krishna's mercy i mean we should not take uh, in bhagavad gita krishna himself says i mean you know that uh, uh, a spirit soul bewildered by his uh, you know false ego thinks himself to be the doer of all activities right but in fact which are in fact carried out by the three modes of material nature so at no point of time whether we are doing something good or you know we should be you know giving ourselves credit for that okay so that is the whole you know kind of some and substance of the bhagavad gita there are other teachings as well but this is one of the most important teachings so yeah thank you so much all and another you know striking factor that i see in this meeting is that most of the you know participants here are mata ji right and you know i i must tell you that you are the real soldiers of uh, you know shila prabhupad because even here in iskon whitefield most of the centers are actually single handedly being run by mata ji okay because you know we we generally go to office we have so many things to do but in spite of you know having family responsibilities you know coming on saturday mornings and you know like you know giving your time and energy when i was growing up there was actually a saying that if an educated woman comes in a family then the entire family becomes educated i will go one step ahead to you know make a statement that if a spiritual woman comes into a family the entire family becomes spiritualized right 
so thank you so much all for joining and uh, i have always maintained that uh, just by participating in sessions like these you are you all are actually helping me to fulfill the instructions of my guru maharaj so you all will be very very blessed thank you so much for that and uh, yeah so we'll go ahead with this session today very interesting session i think uh, you know uh, if not all then at least most of the people you know come to iskon actually start their journey in iskon uh, because of this particular reason you know which is prasadam <laughs> the power of prasadam right and uh, initially like before uh, uh, you know like uh, taking this session i was thinking that how to go about it whether i should come sit in front of you and you know deliver a lecture or should i prepare some ppts and ppts are actually always engaging that's what i have felt you know with nice pictures and all those it keeps the audience engaged so i have just tried to prepare something and uh, just follow i think uh, some very very nice you know transcendental realizations are there in store for us and prasadam is something that we should not be you know uh, ignoring at all it's a very very serious aspect of any devotional service and we will see in the due course of time so let me share my screen and uh, then we can start so the power of prasadam i thought of giving it a jazzy name so life transforming remnants right so so first go with mangala charan and then after that uh, you now we will proceed om agyana timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobhishtam sthapitam yena bhutale swayam roopa kadamahayam dadati svapadantikam vandeham shri gururo shri utapadkamlam shri guru vaishnavamscha shri roopam sagrajatam sahagana raghunathan vitam tam sajeevam साधवैतम सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सह गणलिता श्री विशाखान्ता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते सप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्पतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौर विषय नम नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंघते गिरी यत्कृपा तम हम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिणम परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर हरि ओम ओके सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट दिस सेशन आई वुड लाइक टू डेडिकेट दिस सेशन टू माय गुरु महाराज एंड टू द फाउंडर आचार्य ऑफ इस्कॉन एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्री प्रभुवाद श्री प्रभुवाद की जय सो आई एम डूइंग दिस सेशन फॉर द प्लेजर ऑफ दीज टू पर्सनालिटीज टू होम आई एम इटर्नली इंडेप्टेड आई डोंट नो इफ दीज टू वेर नॉट इन माय लाइफ आई डोंट नो वेर आई वुड हैव बीन लाइंग टुडे राइट सैटरडे मॉर्निंग आई डोंट नो व्हाट आई वुड हैव डन यस्टरडे नाइट एंड यू नो आई वुड हैव बीन सिंपली स्लीपिंग बाय दिस टाइम ओके सो जस्ट ट्राइंग टू डेडिकेट दिस सेशन फॉर प्लेजर ऑफ श्री प्रभुवाद एंड आल्सो टू माय गुरु महाराज whatever i am going to say in this session i'll merely repeat what i have read in the lectures of shila prabhupad i'll merely repeat what i have read in the books of shila prabhupad and i'll merely repeat what i have learned and heard from my shiksha gurus and the guru parampara of so on so continuing with shila prabhupad um, his uh, preaching style was actually very very unique especially when he initially went to boston right or when he landed in the united states of america the situation was such that uh, he was all alone all by himself there were, he himself said that there was just you know he had only 40 rupees in his pocket at that time his typewriter was there 
and uh, the first edition of Srimad Bhagavatam, which he had written, he was it was there with him. And in the due course of time, his typewriter also got stolen. Right. So this was the kind of difficulty Prabhupada was facing at that time. But the most uh, you know difficult part was that uh, he did not fully understand the Western culture. And at the same time, the initial disciples of Srila Prabhupada, they also were not aware of the Vedic culture. Okay. So neither he was you know, very well conversant, nor the disciples were very you know, understanding about Vedic culture. So it was confusion all around. And one you know, very uh, funny example I would like to uh, quote here is uh, that uh, one day Prabhupada was, had just started giving lecture. You know, and some of his very initial disciples were there. And uh, they were very intently listening to him. And at that time, his secretary was his, his way, Shyam Sundar Prabhu. So he immediately ran out of that uh, room where Prabhupada was giving lecture and started calling the other fellow devotees. Hey, come, come, come. Swamiji is saying something wonderful, something very beautiful. Uh, although I am not able to understand a single thing, but he said something very beautiful. So please come. <laughs> so, you know, this was the state at that time that uh, they were not able to understand. So when someone is not able to understand, then what will you explain to them? You know, how How will they comprehend the serious topics like you know, topics dealing with uh, the spirit soul, the topics dealing with transmigration of soul from one body to another, you know, the topics dealing with the you know, cycle of life, death and rebirth, right? So these are very complicated ones, right? And uh, like the disciples of Prabhupada initially, you know, they were not at that, uh, you know, spiritual maturity, you know, to comprehend these kind of concepts. So in order to, you know, like uh, make them very potent, Prabhupada actually took help of two very potent angas of bhakti, okay, which is which are very spiritually potent. And those two angas are chanting, the chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra and Prasadam. Okay. So these two are very potent angas of bhakti. And you know, in Kalyuka also, like it has been recommended that only chanting is uh, something which can you know deliver us from this cycle of life, death, and rebirth. And prasadam, what role it plays, we will see in the due course. So initially, like uh, you know, when uh, Prabhupada was had started the center, and some people started coming to the sessions which he was taking, so he was very very devoted, you know, towards his own devotees, own own disciples, basically, right? And he himself used to, uh, you know, cook for all the people who were coming in the center, you know, and he himself used to offer the, the those hogas, you know, to the lordships, and his. Cooking, mind, he was a very, very good cook, mind you. Okay. And his cookings were not, you know, simple rukha sukha khana at that time. What did he used to prepare? He used to prepare puris, kachori, some very nice vegetables, right? And scorn bullets. I hope all of you know what is scorn bullets, right? So, gulab jamuns basically, they are known as scorn bullets. So, now just tell me when Prabhupada himself is doing all these seva, okay? And, uh, you know, even after the feast was over, he himself used to remove all the, you know, used plates from the center. He used to help his disciples in cleaning up the center. When Prabhupada himself is doing all these sevas, tell me why he will not be able to transform the life of people, you know, whom he touched. Yes? So, uh, like, sometimes when I read his, uh, you know, pastimes, uh, I mean, I'm literally moved to tears, actually, that this old man at age of 70, like, what was there for him to do? You know, why did he at all take all these troubles? You know, to travel you know, to the West, preach and you know, just... He has done all these for our, us, actually, you know, right? And we should be very, very fortunate. We should consider ourselves very fortunate, you know, that we are a part of this glorious parampara. Okay? So, Skwan Bullets <laughs> is another aspect, like what Prabhupada used to do is that he used to prepare lots of gulab jamuns. Okay, and he used to keep a big jar of his phone bullets right outside his center. And he used to tell, you know, people coming in the center, eat as much as you want. <laughs> so just imagine, like, you know, what kind of situation. I mean, I think most of you are from uh, Iskon Juhu, or maybe are you, most of people are, are all around the world. But just imagine if we keep a jar of Iskon bullet just, you know, out, outside or maybe at the entrance of Iskon Juhu. <laughs> How would that be? We are not going to do that, but <laughs> I'm just saying, you can just imagine, right? This will be such a nice... Uh, in India, actually, it's not feasible. You know, the crowd is such that it's uh, not feasible. Too much of crowd. 
But yes, Prabhupada did that actually. He kept a jar of his corn bullets outside, and because he was you know, a firm believer that you know prasadam can actually transform lives, and he was taking help of that. And we have seen that, right? If you see in this picture, you know, like right here, uh, before coming to Krishna consciousness, there was a counterculture. All these people were hippies, actually, right? And uh, all the four regulative principles they were, we which we are following today. They used to break them every single day, every single hour, every single minute, all four of them. Right? And that was their state at that time. And then Prabhupada came, he started doing kirtans along with them. And just see how the disciples of Prabhupada have you know, transformed. They have become the preachers of Bhagavad Gita today. Right? And each and every single one of them uh, have you know, such profound knowledge, such profound knowledge that just by spending maybe 10 to 15 minutes with them, you can learn so much. Right? Very recently, His Grace Bhurijan Prabhu was in our center, right? And I had the fortune of uh, receiving a signed copy of his book, uh, Surrender Unto Me, right? And I just do not have words to describe, you know, the kind of personality, you know, which he is, okay? And similarly, there are so many of them. His Grace Radhanath Swami Maharaj is there. You know, His Grace, uh, you know, Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj, very uh, recently we lost him, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, like, and our own Guru Maharaj, His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj is there, right? So, so many uh, of them are there and uh, all of them, you know, just profound, profound knowledge, right? People with profound knowledge and just see from where they have come, you know, to this. So, this is the you know, life transforming, uh, what to say, uh, the step which uh, Srila Prabhupada took. So when it comes to sattvic food, you know, we all know that uh, sattvic food means vegetarian food without onion, garlic and mushroom. Okay. So when it comes to sattvic food, it's very, very difficult to find those sattvic food in the West, actually. And uh, there was one experience which I would like to share. Uh, there was this guy who was traveling. Uh, I will not like to name the country, but uh, he it was one of the Western countries and he ordered for a veg sandwich and he found a few small chicken pieces in that sandwich. And he said, what is this? Like I ordered for a veg sandwich. Why is chicken uh, in this sandwich? So they just said, okay, thoda sa ye chalega. <laughs> it's veg only. It's a negligible amount. Right? So this is the kind of, uh, you know, uh, what to say, um, excuses which people make there. Even one of my cousins actually, he visited in uh, one of the European countries and he ordered for a veg sandwich. They just put a fish inside that and, you know, served him. So, because why? Because they don't consider fish as a non-vegetarian food. So, these are some kind of, uh, you know, uh, ajeeb ajeeb sa logic, you know, <laughs> which people give there, right? And uh, which we can't, which we won't be able to comprehend. But thanks to Srila Prabhupada and by his mercy, we have spawn centers in almost every major city all around the globe today, right? And devotees, they can simply walk into any of the these centers and have prasadam over there. There is no darth of prasadam, no scarcity of prasadam today, right? And uh, several devotees have actually become devotees just by you know, eating prasad. Uh, one of my Siksha Gurus actually, he started his journey in Iskorn. Why? Because Iskorn served very nice uh, prasadam actually. <laughs> so first time when he went to Iskorn, like it was you know on the request of uh, some monks actually, which he met while going on his way to office. And they just invited him for you know Janmashtami feast. Right, Janmashtami was around the corner, so he went there on Janmashtami. He had prasadam, and then he liked the prasadam so much that he started visiting center every week. Right, and and we have seen, you know, these that initially, like when we start the Bhagavatam class or Gita class, the ten, attendance is, you know, still very limited. But suddenly, I don't know, like you know, when the prasadam time is there, all the people prasadam time on time. Right, suddenly the crowd increases. I don't know denizens of heaven some, from somewhere. They just appear out of nowhere, and you know it's uh, just very very crowded at that time. Right, so most of the people have started uh, their journey in Krishna consciousness uh, for prasadam, and it's it's nothing to be ashamed of. Actually, Shri Bhopad wanted all the grihasthas and the brahmacharis, you know, to eat as much prasadam as possible. Okay, so uh, because that is something which actually cleanses us from within, and we'll see in the subsequent slides. Okay, so the science of Mahaprasad. Okay, uh, so this is very, very now important that how actually Prasadam transforms our life. So, is everyone ready to understand, grab this concept? Okay. So, as we have seen, that there are different 
angas of bhakti okay for example kirtan is there book distribution is there deity worship is there prasadam is there chanting is there and the important part is that if anyone is attached to even one of these angas okay they can make a significant progress on the path of spirituality all the other uh, angas of devotional service will automatically come you know we just need to find one area of interest okay if you are very good kirtaniya just attach yourself to kirtan if we are very good at book distribution just you know go on distributing books if we are you know uh, like we are very in- much interested in deity worship then just take the pujari seva at the temple or you know prasadam cooking distribution you know and all even just you know honoring prasadam you know that actually helps a lot so all we need to do is to just find one area of interest for ourselves attached to that particular seva and you just see your life being transformed you know just like it's a miracle actually right and people you know get attached to any one of these and become a pure devotee and how does this work we will see okay so now we are going to cite some references from the bhagavad gita to understand the science of mahaprasad okay uh, so food is divided into three types based on the modes of material nature okay and if we are able to get this thing you know uh, with uh, absolute clarity then first of all there will never be any confusion that what to eat and what not to eat okay and secondly it will be very easy for us to give us any food which is not offered to krishna most of the times you know at more, many lectures we have seen people say that okay we should eat only krishna prasadam but when it comes to actual implementation in our real life at some point or the other we actually you know falter at at time okay in case of emergency situations when you know nothing is available and still you know there are ways you know where you can work around it but still say for example we are caught in a situation there that you know uh, there is no other option left for for us okay then that's a different thing okay that's a different scenario but in most of the cases it's uh, easy for us to actually you know uh, take food which has been offered to krishna first okay so it's not very difficult thing to do it just needs a uh, you know will power and you know determination to do that okay so we'll cite these three shlokas 8 9 and 10 and then we will see one by one okay that how these different uh, kinds of food actually affect our consciousness okay so this is bhagavad gita chapter number 17 shloka number 8 food in the mode of goodness so it says ayu satva balarogya sukha preeti vivardhana ियलीसेंशियली any sattvic food is basically vegetarian how it is vegetarian i'll we'll see because in the subsequent shlokas it will be very much clear that it's vegetarian food okay and onion and garlic so lot of times and we also avoid onion and garlic so sattvic food means vegetarian food without onion garlic and mushroom okay so lot of times we at iskon you know people ask us that uh, why do you guys avoid onion and garlic what is the problem in doing that okay it has medicinal properties so why not consume them so to that argument i think uh, at least we uh, you know counter it by saying that paracetamol also has medicinal properties do you eat it every day <laughs> breakfast lunch and dinner it's not like that okay so another important aspect is that uh, i mean see food or prasadam should be taken as uh, something which is staple right just because it has some medicinal properties we cannot keep on consuming it every day okay important thing is that if at all you want to lead a healthy life then transform your daily routine in such a way that you know you don't have to depend on you know the medicinal properties or the medicines in general right and it's it's possible it's quite possible people actually a uh, lot of times people they give an excuse that okay i mean uh, we don't have much I mean, uh, we don't have time at all since morning uh, from morning till evening we are super busy and all those things but you know, this is just an excuse to you know avoid any physical activity or any you know healthy activity you know following healthy lifestyle in general right i mean if a person wants to do that they can easily do that uh, time should never be a constraint it is never a constraint okay 
and then these medicinal properties so called medicinal properties of this uh, onion and garlic they are still in research paper okay we do not have any concrete evidence saying that okay you know onion has this 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 you know chemicals in it which are beneficial for these 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 medical condition okay similarly garlic has these 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 chemicals in it and these are beneficial research is on i mean yeah certain experiments have shown you know some uh, you know what to say like positive inferences you know but uh, it has not been you know, medically proven thing okay right now uh, but one thing is definitely medically proven that they agitate the mind especially garlic okay and uh, the best example is the airlines you know uh, the pilots of the civil aviation like you know they are actually forbidden to or rather you know there is a guideline for them that if possible avoid any food uh you know which has garlic in it at least 48 hours before they take flight okay why because it will always agitate your mind and uh, during the flight sometimes a situation may occur where they have to take a decision in a split second right with agitated mind you cannot do that you know you have to be very calm and composed so this is uh, a proven thing okay that it agitates the mind so yeah these are some of the things uh about food in the mode of goodness we'll continue with that okay second very uh, second most important thing is that if we want to make progress in our spiritual life okay then uh, the fundamental thing that we have to do is to be situated in the mode of goodness for most of the time okay and slowly we need to increase that duration okay and once and once a person is actually situated in the mode of goodness then after spending some certain amount of time in that particular platform he or she actually transcends you know that uh, the three modes of material nature you know, and they are situated in what is known as shuddha sattva and then they become a pure devotee okay so with uh, the food what we consume is very important actually if we do not consume the food which is prepared in the mode of goodness then there is no question of us being situated in the mode of goodness most of the time okay so and also when the mind is in satogun when we are you know situated in the mode of goodness goodness is so very very easy for us to focus on the spiritual aspects of life okay else it's very very difficult i mean it's just not possible you can see people all all around 99.9% of the people are just crazy you know running after different allurements given to them by maya okay how many of us are in this session today hardly 30 40 people right ideally like if you know it would have been a, a big number then we could have said okay that uh, yes the other modes also actually work but only people who are in the mode of goodness primarily in the mode of goodness okay they are only able to focus on the spiritual activities otherwise it's very very difficult to do that okay now coming to the food in the mode of passion so what bhagavad gita says katva amla lavana tushya मिजरी एंड डिजीज तो Since most of you here are Mata Jis, how many of you like Pani Puri's Gol Gappa? <laughs> Almost all of them. Even it's my favorite also, you know. But uh, uh, initially, I was never able to eat that. Uh, I I found it very tasty, but it was way too spicy for me. So my tolerance level for spices is very very less actually. So right from childhood, I just used to see people eat. I mean, <laughs> I could not eat that. <laughs> okay, but uh, yes. So what it is saying that. Uh, this pani puri has all these qualities actually <laughs> too bitter salty pungent dry you know not dry but yeah and burning so basically it's uh, it has been proven okay that uh, some people yes obviously they love very spicy food chaat and all those things you can see in the picture right so but scientifically it has been proven that uh, this uh, too much of spice actually it causes a lot of burning sensation okay it has lot of heat within it which actually you know destroys the mucus lining of our food pipe actually so see just how practical bhagavad gita is right this clearly said that such food are causes of distress mis misery and disease 
in the bhagavad gita actually if you uh, you know go on reading 17th chapter and the 18th chapter uh, krishna clearly says the characteristics of the mode of passion so what are the mode of passion is characterized by one very special quality that initially it will be very pleasing but towards the end it will be like a poison okay and just see the food in the mode of passion is also exactly the same while we are eating it we find it very tasty very nice and you no know, very good actually but in the long run it is lot it does a lot of harm to our body okay so another important aspect is that you know this is my one of my personal experiences that uh, there were uh, there was a person who was trying to concoct this you know uh, this particular statement by saying that pungent okay so like that person was adamant that okay onion and garlic are not bad i mean we should not be giving up we should eat everything in a limited amount so uh, his argument was that uh, when we say pungent or spicy so that actually is different for different people it's a relative term basically what he was trying to mention that what is something spicy for me may not be spicy for someone else okay whatever uh, whatever food is pungent smelling for me may not be you know that pungent smelling for someone else but uh, what you should understand here is that when it comes to the shastra especially the bhagavad gita because it has been given by none other than krishna himself we should not try to concoct these things by our own mental speculation okay when once krishna has said that spicy food is in the mode of passion once krishna has said that the pungent smelling food is in the mode of passion we should, should not try to you know bring in ifs and buts over there the best thing is that simply avoid such thing okay and just uh, follow what krishna is saying okay so but always remember that when we are cooking prasadam we are not doing it for ourselves okay we are not cooking it because okay i like samosas very much so i'll prepare samosa and then i'll offer and then because essentially in the name of offering prasadam in that scenario you are satisfying your own you know tongue basically doing that right we have to understand what krishna likes and we need to do just that okay that is what nectar of devotion also tells us and this is what the essence of every vedic scripture okay so offering prasada means what krishna likes and we need to prepare according to that and once we offer it then we accept it as the remnants you know uh, accept it as a prasada so that should be our mood a lot of time when we go to some relatives place okay so people actually pressurize us ki are theek hai kanthi mala pehen liya to kya it's okay i mean but then you know when we are admin then sometimes they say are prabhu ji bas aapke liye hi banaya hai bilkul onion garlic nahi hai right so that is what we need to tell them that okay mere liye banaya hai that is the biggest problem <laughs> you should have cooked it for krishna then if you would have offered to me i would have taken that right but the very fact that you have prepared it for myself that itself is a big good enough reason that you know i should not be taking this consuming this food right so we always should prepare for krishna keeping krishna in mind you know rather than our personal taste and our personal preferences in mind okay so these are just you know yeah people actually work try to work around you know this particular verse just to somehow or the other they try to find some loopholes and so that they continue eating what they eat right so that's not the right attitude so as we have seen that uh, as i said earlier that food in the mind mode of passion it makes the mind turbulent i cited the example of the pilots as well right that uh, they are advised basically so what happens is that if we consume a food which is primarily in the mode of passion our mind will be running out uh, running you know all around restlessly uh, we might be sitting in one position but our minds will not be you know calm and quiet and in such a scenario tell me how will you chant nicely will it be possible uh, i don't know like if you have done a group chanting especially during the yatras actually i have seen you know people when we chant in a group so how it starts that initially people are very calm and you know like sitting in one position hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare then slowly first the head starts moving hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare. then whole body starts moving hare krishna <laughs> and then after that they just get up and then they start walking up and down and you know this is what they do right so this is all the result of a turbulent mind okay if you are diet is proper if you are primarily eating satvic food and you are you are know, situated in the mode of goodness most of the time 
then it will be very easy for you to sit there for you know maybe one and a half two hours and complete your 16 rounds by sitting at one place but uh, because you know that mode of fashion invariably gets mixed right because the ingredients are also not very pure these days okay so some contamination is always there so you know, we actually and maybe our bhakti is also not at that level right we are not very pure devotees that we offer with you know true love and devotion to krishna so you know some contamination still remains and you know we are very restless by that but just imagine like if we deliberately eat you know these foods which are in the mode of fashion then it will be next to impossible for us to chant nicely right so and it affects the both material life as well as spiritual life okay why because material life as i said that you know it has a lot of harmful effects on the body okay spirituality comes later on first health to theek rakhe then we can do some spiritual practices right this will actually jeopardize our health itself continuously if we eat uh, you know spicy food and all these things so just see how practical bhagavad gita is right it, it gives the solution to all the problems it's just that people they just don't know about it they don't read it because they don't know the initially the only conception in the minds of people is are bhagavad gita it says karm karo phal ki chinta mat karo <laughs> that some tag line they read in some of the calendars or somewhere you know and then this is the conception of bhagavad gita for most of the people okay so we should just you know bang this book on the heads not literally i mean just distribute the books that, that read and then uh, to help them now coming to the mode of ignorance yatayamam gatar gat गतरसूतिपर्युषितम चयत उच्चम अच्छा भोजन तामस प्रियम फूड प्रिपेर्ड मोर देन थ्री आवर्स बिफोर बींग ईटन फूड दैट इज टेस्टलेस डी कम्पोज न्यूट्रिड एंड फूड कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ रेमनेंट्स अनटचेबल थिंग्स इज वेरी डियर टू दोज इन द मोड ऑफ डार्कनेस ओके सो इन एनी वैदिक स्क्रिप्चर एनी फॉर्म ऑफ डेड बॉडी ओके वेदर it's a human body or it's any other belonging to any other bird animal or anything that is considered as untouchable okay at actually people uh, in the uh, like you know uh, we have to take a bath if we uh, you know knowingly or unknowingly we you know come in contact with uh, such thing okay so just imagine uh, the non vegetarian foods that people are consuming they are essentially eating dead bodies right and considered untouchable in our shastra and still people give lot of justification you know that uh, arguments in favor of you know eating non vegetarian food and we'll see uh, in the uh, you know forthcoming slides first of all these meat sellers okay very nicely they say fresh meat tender cut now tell me how can a meat or how can a dead body be fresh this decay process is continuously happening within our body even when we are alive it's just that the life force which is within ourselves right now is not allowing the body to decay but that process is on and as soon as you know the life leaves this body that decay process immediately i mean almost instantly it starts okay then how can you say that is a fresh meat <laughs> right that itself is a you know like a contradictory statement okay and in the mode of ignorance entire consciousness is blocked forget about spirituality i mean we can't even able we won't be even able to do our day to day lives properly you no know, day to day activities in our lives properly okay most of the time we will be lazy we will be procrastinating okay and uh, it's a very bad state to be in basically right and uh, right still people give different arguments you know in favor of that we'll see some of the most common arguments what people say okay first is high protein content okay why what was i mean see first of all even the vegetarian diet you can see in the picture they are loaded with proteins okay like you we have you know different types of beans are there different types of dals are there right uh, even spinach contains a lot of protein so there is no dearth of protein in the vegetarian diet this is a misconception being spread you know by people who uh, promote animal killing basically right and what are we going to do with so much of protein even if we build a nice body and you know a bulky body eventually we are going to die <laughs> right so what is the need and uh, when we are getting enough protein so and this is a complete myth that okay you know it's a high protein like a, a non vegetarian food contains high protein similar kind of protein supplements we can easily find in the vegetarian diet also okay and 
there are many bodybuilders wrestlers who are pure vegetarian okay and some of the most of the wrestlers in india who actually represent india in the olympics are 70% to 75% of them are pure vegetarians and they have won gold medals for india in the olympics okay so where is the question of uh, you know like uh, non vegetarian food being superior okay and this concept of chappan bhog is only there for vegetarian items tell me uh, can you prepare chappan bhog from non vegetarian item <laughs> so these are all just misconceptions okay another argument which uh, people give is vitamin b12 is found only in uh, non vegetarian food this is again because of all the nonsense that we have spread all around okay uh if we uh, read our shastras and even the doctors agree to it that abundant amount of vitamin b12 you know can be produced within our body simply if we walk barefoot on soil or on grass बट अभी क्या करें सारा कुछ तो हमने सीमेंट से ढक दिया है राइट एवरीवेयर देर इज अ व्हाइट टॉपिंग ब्लैक टॉपिंग वॉट एवर टॉपिंग नो सॉयल नो सैंड इज देर राइट जस्ट थिंक अबाउट द वेदिक कल्चर ओके द स्पोर्ट्स एंड गेम्स विच वेर वेयर इन आर वेदिक कल्चर ओके वॉट वॉट वेर द स्पोर्ट्स दैट पीपल यूज टू प्ले इन इंडिया रेस्लिंग कबड्डी यू नो खो खो ऑल दीज दे ऑल वेयर स्पोर्ट्स वेयर यू वेर यू हैव टू यू नो एसेंशियली रोल ऑन द मट ओके दैट वॉज the kind of things but no we will simply uh, you know discard those things why because we have bl- we are blindly following west we would rather play cricket or basketball or something you know that oh rolling in the mud i am a software engineer how can i allow my son to you know son or daughter to you know roll in the mud like that it's so you no know, unhygienic oh, <laughs> you know that is the kind of uh, mindset that we have right but uh, see this is all because we have been blindly following the west then the impact of that western culture is such that uh, you know we have simply you know have no regards for our own culture which is very very spiritually advanced scientifically advanced okay and we have to understand that and uh, so vitamin b12 is again not a concern and another important thing you know why this uh, these kind of sports are promoted in our vedic culture right if you see uh, in mahabharat or in even in ramayan you get uh, this uh, concept of mall yuddha or you know wrestling matches you know at that time also why why it is you know promoted so much because we have to understand that our this physical body the gross body is made of five elements okay earth water fire air ether okay but since we are on this earth planetary system the major element in this body is that of earth element okay other elements are there but they are in minute quantities the major portion is taken up by earth element okay so that is the reason why you know we have always heard people saying ki mitti se mile hain ek din mitti mein hi mil jayenge correct because that earth element is very prominent in this uh, particular body so the more we are in contact with earth actually it is more beneficial and you know the body will remain more healthy and this is a very scientifically proven fact you see you go to the villages today the villages are you know far more fit and you know agile than us actually we start growing old you know in the mid 30s itself because of the bad lifestyle that we have right but because they are in constant contact with her they are spending time in the fields the sports they play are you know very desi sports you know they are actually very very fit compared to us right this is a scientific reason which are so these are all you know unnecessary things that uh, have been promoted just to you know make certain section of uh, you know people successful okay so we should not pay any attention to that just stick to your culture stick to the vedic culture and you know it's a uh, way more scientific than whatever advancement our science has made till date okay and just uh, tell me one another thing that okay uh, if the vegetarian diet is so good then why is it that uh, if any medical condition happens in anyone's body the first thing which doctors are, ask us to avoid is the non vegetarian food the first thing the first advice the doctors give that give up non veg food right if it is so good why is it like that right it should not happen okay and also there is a very subtle aspect to this okay that uh, people which we you know people which, who don't understand these things okay that uh, most of the health related issues or any suffering that we are going through in this particular life it's not because of the kind of food that we are eating okay it's because of the sins that we have committed in the past life the food that we eat can only act as a catalyst you know it can accelerate or decelerate the process of uh, suffering basically which we are bound to have which we are bound to get actually okay but uh, 
essentially it is because of our past life karmas so just imagine <clears throat> if we are having some medical condition that is because of our past life sinful activities in order to counter you know those sinful activities we are committing more sin <laughs> right <laughs> so any you know like uh, if we without thinking if we just put any you know remedy in place then yes it may bring us a patch of healthy life for a certain period of time but rest assured that a patch of ill health is waiting for us in the pipeline for a, a long long you know ill health is actually waiting for us in the pipeline we all are aware of this karma cycle right so if required maybe you know sometime later i can take this uh, session on karma in depth but yeah i mean this is the way it is right so all the sufferings that we are uh, all suffering the problems that we are facing in our lives today or all the enjoyments that we are receiving in our lives okay those are only because of our past lives karma okay so all these the, the food that we eat can act as a catalyst it is not uh, the cause of those sufferings basically okay okay so another example uh, what people say is that chicken population will increase if we don't eat chickens right <laughs> as if god has appointed us to you know keep a tab on the chicken population right who are we and what is mother nature doing then okay what is durga devi doing <laughs> if chicken population is increasing right i mean isn't don't you think that she is more well equipped and she is more well versed with uh, this whole creation and she is in charge of this whole creation she should be worried about that right <laughs> rather than we taking the chances okay so this is all you know like uh, stupid reasons that people are giving okay so one yes one important thing that uh, argument that you will get is that plants also have life and when we are killing life okay it's the same that okay we are killing elements you, you are killing plants so the thing is the same okay so yes in that way they are right and we'll see that how do we counteract uh, you know these things okay so one very important thing that we need to understand that this material world is created in such a way that the rule is jivo jivasya bhojanam okay that uh, in order for one living entity to sustain in this material world they will have to kill some other living entity okay that is the rule okay but the problem is that if you kill you will be bound by karma okay so <laughs> tricky game isn't it like how to get out of this place then okay so we'll see that i'll come to that later how do we i want to get out of this so another thing is that uh, why not eat outside so first of all obviously the hygiene is a big concern we never know the about the ingredients how fresh it was you know when it was being prepared or maybe it was maybe two or three days old or how people are preparing it and the subtle aspects so these these are very you know like common things There's, for example when you are cooking so what are the ingredients that we are putting uh, oil is there the spices are there salt is there water is there you know and obviously the food stuffs are there so these are all exter external factors there are some subtle things that uh, you know get added you know when we are doing fire cooking and that is the consciousness of the person and the karma of that person so these two are invisible things that are getting added okay and once these come into that food it will affect our consciousness and our karma also now just imagine we already are so much contaminated are we capable to take karma of other people also <laughs> it's not right and you know some you know one, one very nice uh, another thing which i would like to highlight here is about the hygiene aspect actually this is this story is related to one of my shiksha gurus before he became a monk at, at iskon so he used to travel to office by bus and uh, you know like uh, he was just uh, he had just come to his con he was not a brahmachari back then and he used to go to office and only thing he used to eat outside was that occasionally he used to take some fruit juices okay so one day he was he just ordered a fruit juice and he was also you know doing his chanting you know while waiting so what he saw so one thing which caught his eye was that this person the juice seller he just took a piece of cloth and wiped that uh, jar in which he was actually making the juice very nicely and then with the same cloth he just wiped his sweat which was there on his face 
<laughs> so that was he says that that was the last day i had fruit juice i just ran away from there without taking that juice from <laughs> there right so you will never know how the hygiene of this thing is there and there is one thing which i have seen with my own eyes you know when i was in college actually our college was located at such a place that the back portion of our college used to face the kitchen of a bakery okay and uh, one day i was standing in the balcony uh, waiting for my classes to start and uh, at that time i was just and from the balcony you could easily get the view of the kitchen that what was going inside that and i could easily see that the cooks of the bakery they came in uh, they had to bake something so they just uh, you know took this uh, big uh, uh, what to say uh, a piece of the floor uh, dough basically which they prepare a large piece they threw it down on the ground and two of them just uh, you know stood on that dough and then they just stomping it with their feet right so this is how they actually mix the dough <laughs> like this i have seen with my own eyes okay and after that i just stopped you know consuming any bakery items outside and it was a long time back then i was not even uh, associated with this one at that time but just so this hygiene is a big concern really you know whatever it looks from out, outside the restaurant may seem to be very jazzy and very clean neat and you know lighted up well lighted up but uh, you never know what's going on inside the kitchen okay and also the karma and the consciousness of the person gets added that is the reason why we are so so strict you know at is gone when it comes to fire cooking okay that the person should be chanting 16 rounds before entering the kitchen correct and uh, you know they must have taken a bath you know that these are the two norms that which are there for is gone devotees to do some fire cooking okay so there's so much of contamination even on the gross platform what to speak about subtle aspects right so now uh, why it is so now uh, another thing which i would like to say we said that okay when we kill the plants we also get the karmas okay so how to counteract that so the answers we get in uh, bhagavad gita chapter 3 shloka number 13 and uh, chapter 9 shloka number 26 so 3.13 will first uh, see jag vishishta shina santo muchyante sarva kilbashe bhunjate te tvagham papa ye प्रचंत्यात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्मकारणात्
Okay, these are the things which Krishna accepts, and apart from that, he has always explicitly mentioned in this particular sloka of the Bhagavad Gita what is what can be offered to Krishna. So anyone who asks you, Bhagwan ne bola hai kya? Ki sirf vegetarian food khana hai. Yes, you can directly feel with full confidence. You can say, Ha, Bhagwan ne bola hai. Ye pad Gita yahan pe. <laughs> this is the sloka number, right? So Another important aspect which I would like to touch upon is that when we offer prasadam, there is no visible change in the prasadam, right? Like what we offer, same thing is coming back to us, right? Then how can we be sure that, okay, Krishna has accepted it, right? So the answer is in the Brahma Samhita, okay? That uh, since Krishna's body is spiritual, right? Sachidanand Vigra, right? Krishna's body is Sachidanand Vigra, okay? So that means it is eternally blissful, full of knowledge and it's basically absolute. Okay. So when we say that the body of Krishna is absolute, it's a spiritual body, that means that any organ of that particular body is capable of performing activities of any other organ. Okay. So it's not necessarily that Krishna will have to take the food from in his hands and then put it in his mouth. No. He can simply, you know, accept that food by glancing. Okay. So in the Brahma Samhita, it it says. Angani yasya sakalendriya vritti manti, pashyanti panti, kalayanti chiram jaganti. That means each of the limbs that transcendental figure possesses in himself, the full fledged function of all the organs, and eternally sees, maintains, and manifests the infinite universe, both spiritual and mundane. You know, that means one particular limb or one particular organ of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is capable of performing the activities of all the other organs of the body. Okay. So they do not have to, he, he does not have to, you know, like accept the food as we do. Okay. So rest assured that uh, just by glancing at the food, Krishna actually spiritualizes, you know, that entire food and makes it karma free. Okay. And uh, yes, there was one another thing which I wanted to say just slipped off my mind. But yeah, anyways, I'll come back to that, you know, once I get that. Yes. Yeah, another yeah, another example, the analogy that we cite here is that uh, when we send an email to someone, right? So what happens? There are two copies. One copy is sent to that person and another copy will be saved in your sent item. <laughs> right? <laughs> so similarly, one copy went to Krishna, the other copy is there <laughs> as prasadam. So you can just take that. Right? This is a very gross, on the gross platform, we try to give this analogy. Okay? So... Yeah, so he adds his potency by glancing and then spiritualized. The food is completely spiritualized and most important thing, the prasadam is non-different from Krishna. So we should be very, very careful while honoring prasadam. Okay, once we are honoring prasadam, our full focus should be on that with a mood that we are doing devotional service from Krishna because for Krishna because honoring prasadam is also a kind of devotional service. Okay, at that time, avoid too much of talking or shouting at others or any kind of, you know, like uh, behavior which is considered unethical in the Vaishnavism, in the Vaishnava Parampara, okay? Please try to be very specific about this thing because always remember this uh, prasadam is non-different from Krishna and honoring prasadam, by honoring prasadam, you are actually performing a devotional service, okay? And when prasadam is honored, Krishna himself enters our body and purifies us from within. So this is the science of prasadam, okay? So it purifies us from within. Okay. And trust me, if a person has no interest in chanting, if a person has no interest in attending any of these satsang, if a person has no interest in you know reading the Bhagavad Gita, still okay, right? We will eat food, right, for our survival. So how difficult it is. You just prepare something, offer it to Krishna. Just by doing that, trust me, we'll make significant progress. We will be, you know, becoming Krishna conscious. And the person will automatically develop interest for chanting, for reading, or and for you know going to satsang, going to temple, you know every week, not every day, right? So this is the you know as I said earlier in the beginning slide, one of the most spiritually potent angas of bhakti, the prasadam. Okay, and this is what Prabhupada used as a tool, you know, to transform all the hippies to devotees, correct? So towards the end, yeah, I'll I'll take the questions uh, just after just a few more slides remaining, Mataji. After that, I'll take the questions. Okay. Um, so another important thing is uh, this uh, 
ऑफर द बेस्ट फूड टू कृष्णा ओके तो ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए कि वी प्रिपेयर समथिंग ऑर्डनरी एंड बिकॉज ही सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड एड ही इज बींग सर्व बाई हंड्रेड एंड थाउजेंड ऑफ लक्ष्मी at least something we should do from our side right <laughs> at least what is whatever is in the best of our capability we should try to offer him okay so just take for example uh, okay just tell me one thing what is our relationship with krishna so in the chatane charitamrit we have seen krishna jeevesh swarup hoy krishner nitida that we are eternal loving servants of krishna right so just imagine that there's a housemaid at your home and she Gives you some very rukha sukha khana, and for herself she prepares nice paneer butter masala and is eating in front of you. <laughs> will you like that? Right? We will not like that. Why? Because she is a servant, right? And she should be eating what has been offered to her. Or if she prepares the food, first eats herself, and then ha mimsa. Abhi sahi hai. Ek khana mein abhi bilkul thik hai. Aap abhi khao. Will that be a good etiquette from her side? No. So she should be eating what. is being made for us and she should be first serving it to us and then you know after once we are done you know then she should be taking the food that is the basic etiquette okay because she is serving okay she is in that world. so we are also servants of krishna so we also should have that kind of attitude okay it's not that ki kuch bhi chadha diya just for the purpose of offering bhoga and then after that we are you know eating whatever we like you know? so in the beginning as i said that when we are preparing prasadam we are not doing it for ourselves not doing it what we like okay we have to keep in mind that we are preparing it for krishna what krishna likes you know once after we offer it we accept it as the remnants okay now the last slide how to offer bhoga at home so there is a procedure for doing that uh, and uh, at iskon we follow this one okay so first is three times guru pranam mantra now this particular step is applicable only for initiated devotees or the devotees who have taken shelter okay because once you take shelter or get initiated you get the pranam mantra of that guru as well the guru or your spiritual master from whom you have taken the initiation okay so we have to chant that as well those who are non initiated devotees they can skip this particular step okay or those who have not taken shelter Coming to a second, three times we have to chant Shila Prabhupada Pranam Mantra. Okay, Namo Om Vishnu Pada Ayya Krishna Prishtha Ayya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gaur Vani Pracharine Mir Vishesha Shunya Vadi Paschate Desha Tarine. This you have to do three times. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention you first offer the food. In this picture, it's not shown clearly, but uh, in the altar, what we do is that we offer the food inside the altar. Then we put the curtains on. okay the way we do in the temples okay and then we chant start chanting these mantras with the bell in our hand continuously ringing the bell okay so three times shri prabhu pad pranam mantra and then after that we have to chant this mantra namo mahavadanyaya krishna prem pradayate krishnaya krishna chaitanya namine gaurat vishenava this we have to do three times then namo brahmanaya devaya go brahmanaya hitaya cha jagat hitaya krishnaya govindaya namo namo this again three times and then hare krishna maha mantra and then hari om tat sat so the logic behind this is that we are of we are ourselves are not capable or not qualified enough to approach krishna directly okay so we are doing it through the guru parampara so initiated devotees first offer it to their guru okay they request him to offer it to shila prabhupad who is uh, you know the uh, the preeminent uh, shiksha guru or the spiritual master for most of the almost all the devotee that is gone right so then we so first we offer to guru then to shila prabhupad shila prabhupad we request him to offer to lord chaitanya mahaprabhu okay and then finally we request chaitanya mahaprabhu to offer it to krishna okay we cannot directly approach krishna we are just not qualified for doing that okay so this is the whole idea for this and it's very simple it hardly takes what maybe 5 minutes in this uh, chanting of these mantras and then another 5 to 10 minutes you know just keeping the bhoga there after that you can take and you know mix it with all the food stuffs it's just as simple as that and just imagine you can transform your life just by doing this activity each and every day for grihastha the rules are even more relaxed it's uh, the rule is that uh, in the entire day at least one you know meal with grains you should offer to krishna okay you do not even have to do all the three times okay but just make sure that once you are preparing the bhoga then you should have taken a bath you should wear a clean cloth 
clean clothes and then the kitchen should be very clean okay if these things are followed and just uh, follow these steps it's very simple it can be it can be life transforming okay so that brings me to the end of this session i would like to pause here and i see a couple of hands being raised so uh, i am sure you all will be having a lot of questions so please uh, go ahead i can see shobha mata ji and divya mata ji raising their hands so shobha mata ji please go ahead first thing haribol that was pranam prabhu ji shila prabhat ki jai no yes. doubt after coming to krishna consciousness uh, i very much understood uh, the prasadam the importance of prasadam and how it uh, really impacts our thought words and action no doubt yes. in that and uh, it's really doing amazing with my counterpart prabhu ji also who is mm -hmm. totally against this con silently i'm giving prasadam to him day <laughs> so that he's allowing me to chant and do naivedyam daily and tulasi puja hari yeah. bol to ji and only yeah. one doubt is that we are all working mostly working and i do prasadam daily uh, do the puja aarti and take the prasad have the prasadam in the morning and also take the prasadam but mm -hmm. by the time i take it will be 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the evening mm -hmm. so it mm -hmm. won't be the three hours or four hours cooking no but... so this yeah so actually i understood your question mate so this particular thing that we saw in the verse for the food in the mode of ignorance right uh, th that is applicable to normal food stuff okay not for prasadam prasadam you can take any time as long as it is good okay so okay. it is not applicable to that and trust me your prabhu ji will also become a devotee one day he'll chant with you one day okay just I keep know, on feeding him <laughs> just keep him feeding prasadam yeah thank you prabhu ji thank you hari bol hari Okay. Uh, next is Divya Mata Ji. Please go ahead. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Firstly, very wonderful class. Uh, I didn't hari. know that one hour has uh, gone so quickly. Thank you hari. so much hari. for wonderful insight. So, my question over here is: Sometimes we will be going out, and we will have to consume uh, maybe some uh, juice or uh, uh, hmm. anything because hmm. it's summer time. Hmm. So, at that particular point of time, there is always we there is this knowledge always there that we have to serve to Krishna and then. Uh, eat it but uh, somehow sometimes why because uh, for me it is uh, not uh, that entire family is in uh, krishna consciousness it is only me um, uh, so sometimes uh, it so happens like that prabhu it, at that particular point of time uh, how are we supposed to go ahead prabhu without being guilt but still consuming Hmm. So the thing is that Mata Ji carry something with you. The best option is that if you you can carry some juice or something to drink along with you. Okay. Uh, as I said earlier, that you know Maya is very strong. Okay. When you see those many devils all around you, <laughs> you know it's very natural that you will get attracted to those things and ultimately will give in to the desire of the tongue. Okay. Right. So yeah. So best thing is that carry something with you. That's what I have been doing. Okay. I have completely okay. stopped even even packaged food. I have stopped. Okay. Until unless I'm dying, which is the emergency dharma. <laughs> till that time, I'm not going to take anything. Right. So okay. it's it's just all about will, Mata Ji. And you know there are ways to work around it. You know, as uh, uh, like uh, uh, Mata Ji earlier, uh, you know, she said that, that she is preparing prasadam and she's also taking it to the work. Right. So now, once you are having that, then you know where is the problem? I don't see any problems there. So if you similarly, if you carry something to drink with yourself, then okay. I don't think that uh, you know you will be in that situation, right? And I have given that example. One of my siksha gurus, he was actually consuming fruit juices, right, but you know right, how right. how it is being made, right? <laughs> so you right, never right. know. You never know about the kind of hygiene, whether the person has taken a bath, what is the consciousness of that person. Okay. Right. So right. all those things are going in that. So better to avoid it. Yeah, no, if possible. Okay, and one last question, Prabhu ji. Um, with respect to Om Tat Sat, I always mm. had. Uh, uh, what does it actually represent, Prabhu? If uh, on a mm. if, yes, so uh, yeah, it actually it has been very nicely explained in one of the purports of Bhagavad Gita. I am forgetting that particular shloka, but I'll get back to that. Okay, uh, after performing any uh, auspicious activity, right? So we end it by saying Hari Om Tat Sat. Okay, so uh, these three uh, Om Tat and Sat they are both actually representations of Krishna. Okay, in different forms, and Prabhu Pada explained it in the purport. Uh, I'll try to get and you know I'll circulate it uh, maybe to Midhavni Mata Ji and she can share it with all of you. Yeah, yeah, it's, sure. It's in the purport of Prabhu Pada Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Prabhu Ji. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. Okay, we Prabhuji, have. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. I've Hare just Krishna. heard about this uh, Hari Om. Hari Om Tat Sat. Mm -hmm. you no, know, in a lecture, what I heard was it's it is for the pleasure of Krishna. 
Yes, that's what yes. I heard. Yeah, it's it's a form of like you know it's Krishna's name only. Uh, but yeah. uh, when performing some auspicious activities, we utter these three words. Yeah. Okay, Prabhu ji. Hmm. Okay, okay, I have a question. I'll ask after after they finish, Prabhu ji. Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead, Mata ji. Right now, no problems. Yeah. Uh, no, Prabhu ji, I'm initiator. Now, okay. when you offer this bhoga, now you said in temples they close the uh, they close altar. the curtain and hmm. altar, and then hmm. you know they say you know Namo hmm. Vishnu Padaya all hmm. that. Correct. But you have to at home also you have to close the curtain and say, or you can open the curtain and then say and then close the curtain. Uh, no, generally, like uh, you know, uh, during my altar installation, uh, what instructions I was given was that follow exactly what is being done in the temple. Okay, if you can follow it as closely as possible, then nothing better than that. Okay. Okay. So okay, we just you. close, yeah, close it. Uh, just say offer the food and then close the curtains and then you can just uh, okay. offer the, the food and offer the food and then close the curtain. No, that's yeah, what I want to do. Yeah, I mean you can keep the food like in the altar, and then you close that altar altogether along with yeah, the food and Krishna. Yeah, like that. And then we can say Namo Vishnu Pada. Then we say the prayers. Correct. Yeah. Okay, Prabhu ji. Uh, one thing more which I noticed, I saw it in you know WhatsApp, you know this um, video that mm -hmm. about that that door door which you said no that outside mm -hmm. door how they make. Mm -hmm. I saw it like like you know they were making this door. One person goes to the loo like uh, the squatting mm -hmm. type. Exactly. And then, <laughs> Uh, like, you know, he he walks the door. Yeah. From that exactly. day, I really feel so piggish. Yeah. Then yeah. The other, I mean, about another one, Prabhuji, the Pani Puri. One yeah. fellow was uh, like you know a vendor on the street yeah. in, in Mumbai, I think. He was selling Pani Puri. Some you know all of a sudden the the Pani of the Puri had finished. So he mm. looked around there and there, and then you know he she urinated and put in that masalas uh, and kept it there. Correct. This yeah. is so, it, it is so sickening, Prabhuji. Yeah. I just want to share with you. Yeah. No, so yeah, this is see, these are the problems actually, Mataji. So that is yeah. the reason. And once we actually observe these, see, generally what happens, we don't see these things happening. Okay. Yeah. So we so you know what to say, out of sight, out of mind. You know, that's mm -hmm. what the thing is. But once you see it from your own eyes, trust me, you know, people, no one will even have to ask you or you know, pursue you to actually give up, you know, eating outside. Okay. Yes. You'll automatically do that. Yeah. Okay. Suma Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna yeah. Prabhuji, Pranams Prabhuji. Prabhuji, yeah. uh, we are not we are not uh, um, making a prasadam for Krishna Prabhuji now. We are mm -hmm. all, I am doing, uh, offering prasadam uh, on the preferences of my family members Prabhuji. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, just to bring them to Krishna consciousness, at least mm -hmm. if they have that prasadam, mm -hmm. uh, yes, with yes. that uh, Krukruti, they'll come. They so will definitely to... come, Mataji. <laughs> Don't Hare. worry about that. Just keep doing that, yeah. Yeah, because I'm not keeping the preferences of Krishna Prabhuji because I don't know also what Krishna likes and everything. No, so I have just, uh, you can just refer to this lecture, Mataji. I think I have given the, the three references. Krishna. Yeah, the, yeah, the three references which I have given, the food in the mode of goodness, food in the mode of passion and food in the mode of ignorance. Just avoid what is there in passion and ignorance and stick to what is there in mode yes, of goodness. That that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's all and we have to Prabhuji, do. Prabhuji, what kind of prayerful mood one should have, Prabhuji, while offering prasada? Because how to make it more potent, Prabhuji? In just one of think, the class, one Prabhuji had said. Just potent. think of think of Srimati Radharani while preparing the prasada. Ah, okay, so, Prabhuji, Krishna Hare. will accept it with both hands. He will grab it Hare. from you, actually. <laughs> Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, Padma Mataji, you can uh, go ahead. Okay, Prabhuji, uh, then uh, sometimes we make the, like, you know, we make the boga, all of a sudden a family member has to rush, you know, urgently, you know, before we could offer. So mm -hmm. that one portion we can say, we can, like, you know, serve for him, and then we can say, uh, Om Vishnu, 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 and then give. Because mm -hmm. this also I heard somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so, see, it all depends yeah. upon what is the urgency, Mataji. Like, you know, sometimes uh, we need to uh, take help of what is known as Vivek. Okay, so you know very tactfully we need to understand that uh, I am rushing for something, but is it that important that you know requires my immediate attention? Okay, if not, then we can definitely delay it. Say, for example, if you are at home alone and then you are cooking, and if someone is at the door, then okay, that's fine. Like you know, those things are unavoidable. Like uh, you have to attend and all those things. But if some phone calls come, mobile phone calls come, or something is there, then you can easily you know ignore them and you know continue with your cooking. Yes, 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 yes. Brother. No, what I'm actually what I'm referring is if somebody has to rush, 
like you know, mm. family member has to go somewhere for 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 something urgent. And if he says like you know, give me prasad, give me prasad, what do we do? But then what do we do? The small portion we can put in a box and then say Om Vish, uh, Vishnu, 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 and give. No, mm. we can do that. No, Prabhuji. Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, we can. But yeah, those are all you know, emergency uh, yeah, situations yes. kind of thing. You know, like yes, uh, exactly. yeah, getting around the actual process. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> better to do some time management, Mataji, if possible. Just even for five minutes, if we can offer it to Krishna, then I think uh, okay. it should be good. In, yeah. But sometimes they can't even wait for five minutes, uh, like, <laughs> because of the urgency. Yeah, then, that's why. Yeah, yeah, this then, doesn't happen regularly. It happens correct. once in a week. Yeah, then, then it's fine, Mataji. It's fine. Once in a week okay. is okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Prabhuji. Okay. Bhumita Mataji? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji Panams. I had a question uh, that. As um, Divya Mataji said, sometimes we go outside with a family mm -hmm. and uh, you said you pack your things from home. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm the only one who is in this Krishna consciousness in my family. As I'm a Grahastha and my family, like my husband and my kids are not. Okay. So Prabhuji, I'm in a situation like sometimes, you know, it's not possible. I'm very much eager to do things. No, you you can do it yourself, Mataji. No, no problems. Maybe see, but even see, my wife is not into Krishna consciousness. She is a spiritual person. She is in some other sampradaya actually, and uh, she is not in Krishna consciousness. But uh, I follow all those things, and you know, see if they understand you. Okay, when people say that, okay, I'm concerned for you, I understand you. That means okay. they will be fully supportive of you. Okay, so at no point in time you try to give up these things. You. Clearly say that, okay, since I have taken to Krishna consciousness, these are the certain instructions which have been given to me and I have to follow them. Because even yeah. Prabhupada used to say that at the end of the day, all of us are fl flying our own planes. Okay, An aeroplane, when it is on the runway or on the airport, then there is a lot of support staff, ground staff is there to help it out. You know, But once it yeah. takes to the air, then it's up to the pilot themselves. And we are just flying our own planes. Okay, So first, yeah. Yeah. thought yourself, eventually... Yeah. Feeding them prasadam, they will also become Krishna conscious. You have to be, uh, you know, one hundred percent sure about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So but just keep, one, keep doing that. Yeah. Yeah. One more question. Like sometimes, what happens, you know, in this uh, in our life, like not for one day. We are going for two, three days. Mm -hmm. In that particular situation, my husband is not in this, so he is not. He's supportive at home and all that, but sometimes when we go out, he gets irritated. Like uh, you know, so you are following so much, it's very hard for me because of you. Uh, mm -hmm. We can't go out and this and that. And sometimes if we go out of station, then there is a problem. See, there's out of issue. station also, like, yeah, you, you have to convince him, Mataji. See, because you tell him that, okay, I'll be there at the restaurant sitting with you. I'll give my company. Okay. It's not that I'll ask you to go and eat alone. Okay. I'll be yeah, there so all the time, but please don't force me to eat anything. As far as out of station is concerned, you take a rice cooker along with you, Mataji, and you can easily prepare khichdi or maybe ghee rice, something you can do easily. I mean, see, people find ways actually and these corn centers are there everywhere you can go and you know have prasadam there actually yeah yeah okay thank you so work, yeah so thank workarounds you. are there mataji i mean it's not it just need to be I'm determined trying yeah. Prabhuji, i'm trying my best yeah, sometimes yeah. it gets a little frustrated no no i mean if, krishna if will help you mataji, members are not worry. supportive yeah. krishna will help you i fully understand all the but please uh, pray yeah, yeah, yeah for my family my husband yeah, my kids Prabhu. yes all the, you know, yeah. like Matajis who are coming in my Gita course. Actually, I conduct a Gita course every Saturday. Like today, 5 p.m. also there is uh, the class. I'm going shloka by shloka there. Most of okay. them are in this similar situation. Okay. And your husband is actually, you know, actually supportive of you. There are people yeah. who, the family is entirely against them. Okay. Kya ho gaya yeah. Why? What has happened? She is not enjoying yeah. the life and all those things. You know, such kind of comments are coming. But then, you know, yeah. they are determined to keep following that. Yeah. Yeah. Just stick to it, okay. Krishna will help you. Don't worry. Okay. Mid Hare Krishna. Okay, Midhavani Mataji was raising her hand. So we can just uh, take Krishna. her question and then. Yeah, then it's Pranam Prabhu. Actually, I, I didn't have a question. I was just wanting to uh, answer Padma Mataji. Hmm. Like, uh, you know, it generally happens that, uh, you know, some days it becomes urgent and somebody has to leave immediately. Huh. Uh, so what, what I generally do is... Uh, you know, I don't, uh, you know, I, I just give it in a, in a in a small box. You know, I ask the person to have it, you know, after going to college, you know, during the morning break like that. You know, so that Krishna is offered and that prasadam they can have after 10-15 minutes also or when they are commuting on the way or something like that. 
so that uh, you know at least five minutes it is offered because Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu, we do when we are not able to offer. Like for mm -hmm. example, if you are somewhere outside, uh, you know, and uh, we are we are uh, consuming uh, you know some fruits or cut fruits or something or you know directly because we don't have anything, we've not taken anything, we just see uh, you know a mango or uh, you know something like that, and then we take it and then uh, we say Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu, Manasikama, we offer. And then we have it. That is where we do Shri Vishnu. Shri, we cannot take a portion and say Shri Vishnu and offer the balance. Because when we offer, take a portion and offer, that entire thing is offered. You know, you can, it's not like you take a portion. Uh, you know, I've heard this concept when, you know, we need to make boga for two, three temples. Like, for example, we have Mira Road, we have Jagannath uh, Center also. So, we make uh, some bogas which we, we, we take to two different temples also. Like, we visit two, three temples for Janmashtami or uh, something like that. So that time what we make is we make separately, we, we you know, pack it, keep it separately. And then, you know, it's not yet offered. Then we make, for example, if I'm making ribbon pakoda, then I make three packets for three different centers and then they are not offered because none of them are offered. So we take it to one temple, offer that portion there, option like that is okay. But then if you have already taken a portion and given to somebody, then, you know, it, the entire thing becomes not offerable because mm. it's already offered. Correct. It's already taken out. Taken. It's, it's already, yeah. Uh, mm. That's what I just wanted to mention. Yes, yes, yes. I think that's yeah, a very okay, important thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mataji. Right. Understood. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. As always, today was a very, very wonderful session, practical session. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm really amazed. You know, uh, I, I I must say, uh, you know, I lack in determination. Uh, so I'm, I'm really enthused by, you know, today's class by Prabhu. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, yeah. Like, like you say, you know, you, very, very clearly you say, you know, take a rice cooker and go and cook there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, <laughs> I like that. That was very nice. <laughs> so stunned because, uh, you know, I will never tell something like that because I myself know I'm not so, so strict in following yeah. that. But the way you said it, Madhuji, take a rice cooker and cook it there. I can imagine, you know, how staunch and determined you are, Prabhu. I'm really seeking your blessings, uh, you know, that we all become, you know, we should become like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm so inspired by your uh, today's session. You know, uh, generally what I do, especially when I, uh, you know, I my work requires travel. So when I, when I have to travel, uh, I also go like with my teammates to the restaurants. I don't mm. uh, take, food, yeah. you know, I have like Same. fruit salad. Or, uh, you know, something I do, Manasika offering, you know, Krishna, mm -hmm. please accept it. You know, because, you know, you can't go and uh, like Mamita Mataji also, you said, you go, mm -hmm. you give your company, but don't mm -hmm. eat anything. Yeah, don't you eat know? anything. I have, that means... I have not been able to personally follow it, Prabhu. When I go with my colleagues, I have, like, of course, the fire aspect I do take, I don't eat cooked items. But then, you know, fruit salad or a fruit juice, something like that, you know, I offer to, uh, you know, Manasika to Krishna. Uh, you know, because uh, when when the when the food gets cooked, it gets the consciousness of the person who's cooking. Otherwise, mm. uh, you know, uncut fruits. Uh, mm. Generally, uh, you know what what we pick up uh, when you're going out. You know, when you're traveling on the car a long time. Uh, you know, we take this uncut fruits like guava, apple, and all. So I I, I tell my children, you know, bite and eat. <laughs> you know, because yeah. if you want also uh, a yeah. little bit of that yeah. uh, that person's consciousness. Uh, mm. But uh, you know, uncut fruits. You know, that's mm. what uh, we generally go by. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, but I sincerely pray and hope and sincerely desire that, uh, you know, I sincerely practice what you say, Prabhu. Uh, yes, I love the idea. confidence, the, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, what is this? You know, yeah. it should uh, take yeah. ice cooker yeah. and cook it. I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will try, Prabhu. Yeah. No, this <laughs> confidence so actually... <laughs> Yeah, Actually, your class is so yeah. inspiring, Prabhuji. Can you please give me your number? Because some uh, one or two students overseas, they yeah. want eating class. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you yeah, sure, a sure. link or something? Yeah, I will mm -hmm. share. Yeah, I'll share my link uh, of uh, the group uh, with uh, Midhavni Mataji. She can yeah. circulate yeah. it to you. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes, Prabhuji. This for evening yeah. classes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Thank evening you so class. much. Yeah. Thank you so and much. And Nandini, Nandini Mataji has a question. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, can I ask? Sorry for the date. No, no problem, Mother. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I am the only person in my house uh, in Krishna consciousness. My son, he gets angry. <laughs> he whenever I, I'm when I'm offering for uh, 
god but what i do is before he gets up i complete my uh, uh, tiffin and lunch whatever it is i offer it to god in the morning at one stretch itself morning uh, 4:30 i'll offer the flowers and i mean and uh, fruits and uh, milk then at 9:30 before going to office i uh, offer uh, tiffin and lunch the only uh, 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 offering i do is in the morning afternoon and night i don't do anything at home so we used to consume the same thing so mm. is it fine because i am for uh, krishna i am doing it only for once in the morning that's fine mata ji i mean depending see shila prabhupad also mentioned one thing you know do whatever you do according to time place and circumstances if you hear superkirti prabhu he spent a lot of time with uh, you know uh, shila prabhupad and he always used to mention time place and circumstances right so <laughs> so the, it's okay mata ji like you know the rule for grihasthas is that at least once you should be offering grain prasadam to sri krishna uh, at what time you do that it's up to you okay whether it's breakfast whether it's dinner whether it's lunch time but it will be nice if we are able to do it all the three times but even in my house like all the three times is not possible we try to do it twice okay uh, so most of the times we end up doing twice but the breakfast is actually very challenging you know like uh, Uh, everyone will have to get up in the morning take a bath i can do that i have to do that anyways but uh, it becomes difficult for my wife you know to because the kids are also going to school and all those things first timings are there so we have to adhere to that right so it's okay like for grihastha the things are relaxed a bit so that is another reason why you know uh, like it's not very difficult for us to practice you know it's just we determine uh, and make a will you know that okay we have to do And yeah since we are going to office uh, i i'll be doing it earlier itself both uh, tiffin and lunch will be offered at the same time and hmm. night also when i come late and i can't do anything but i will take only the same yeah. thing we have done and hmm. one more uh, question prabhu ji my my son sudden sometimes what happens he comes in uh, to the kitchen and he takes it and eats it he, he i when i tell him no no wait me he shouts at me uh, i i don't like you putting this tulasi in this boga and offering to god and he'll be shouting like that that's why i do it earlier but sometimes hmm. it happens at that time i don't know what to do prabhu ji hmm. yeah i know i mean that's a difficult situation but then uh like being a son he should not be doing that like he, uh, you should be in more control you know telling him that what to do and what not to do i mean that is a problem with all the kids these days actually you know the way they speak the way their behavior is towards you know that line of demarcation between a senior and a junior you know that is actually gone now okay that is the biggest problem and this all has been uh, coming here because of the our blindly following the western culture and all this you know netflix and the other ott platforms okay they show so much of nonsense over there that the whole consciousness is getting contaminated actually right so all you can do is to pray just uh, you be very determined and you know in, with full determination and focus you practice krishna consciousness because kids actually learn what they see you know more than uh, you know saying them or telling them uh, uh, they may not listen to you okay but if they see you continuously practicing day in and day out then that will have a bigger impact and also it depends a lot on the sweetrithi of that individual soul mata ji okay i mean maybe he is your son or you know the relatives are all around but at the end of the day we all are spirit souls and we all have our own baggage of karma okay so just pray to krishna that okay uh, krishna if you so desire please you know help him progress in krishna consciousness make him a devotee okay or if not a devotee then at least you know a good human being in the first place right so krishna will definitely help mata ji if you are sincere just see mm-hmm. if prabhupada was able to open 108 temples in 12 years then you are just asking for your son mata ji krishna will definitely help <laughs> actually actually he knows he comes and tell me all krishna stories he will be telling uh, what how, how did he take it in uh, in uh, in his, uh, how how did he lift there go with then uh, and he used to tell everything before he was not like that but uh, after we had few uh, some distress in our family so from that time on uh, from 2020 he he said that i don't believe god uh, from that time only he has changed he is before he used to tell anuman chali is i used to come with me for everything he never used to say all these things but now he is for past 4 years he is like that so the problem is uh, for this particular in this particular scenario see that is a problem with most of the people around the world right because the thing is that uh, when we go to god okay when we go to pray something then we obviously expect something in return that okay i am offering you one laddu you give me this 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 and this right i will offer you three agarbattis mm-hmm. you give me this 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 
so essentially you see uh, how our consciousness is that we are actually ordering god okay that you have to fulfill my these you know desires basically and if he doesn't do that like apparently if krishna doesn't do that then we say that okay there is no god that means it's our ego basically that how come this person did not you know fulfill my desire did not do what i asked for right but it's always the other way around right we should not be asking rather we should be serving krishna so if this kind of thought process if you are able to somehow inculcate in his mind then i think that consciousness will slowly shift because since uh-huh. you said that he is already reading the books then i think he is on the right track just you know some fine tuning is required so yeah okay actually not about the desires we had some loss uh, in our family so from that time he has got uh, his father and his my, my brother so like that from that time he has got uh, into this one loss of a person he yeah just yeah yeah just give him some time mataji i think uh, okay. you know as he will grow up he will mature and then he will understand because he is on the okay. right path he is the right company so i am fully confident that he will bounce back yeah thank you thank you your blessings please thank you prabhu ji hari krishna thank, thank you so much, so much prabhu ji yeah thank you wonderful wonderful class prabhu ji i i do believe that prasad the more knowledge we have but this class was so crystal clear and it hit the right chord at least within me mm-hmm. and how important is prasad all theory wise we knew everything but it has really touched some chord within that how important prasad is prabhu ji thank you so much for Very bringing good. it that Very way that prabhu ji one class we need on karma yes prabhu ji definitely mata ji yes. definitely so, mata ji yeah. yeah. mata ji ashish, ashish prabhu ji <laughs> yeah ashish prabhu ji talk to him mata ji next saturday prabhu please yes prabhu ji next saturday okay next saturday i can i Vita can mata ji if you can tell me mata ji please very important topic prabhu ji yeah Uh, so we will uh, we will request ashish prabhu uh, so yes. let's see uh, what prabhu yes mataji thank you mataji hari krishna and i think that class will need some extra time because we'll have hmm. boards of lot questions, of questions on that yeah. everybody will have so many lot questions of questions will come up for that <laughs> but topic. icf now the next session is at 11:30 so so that's yeah, okay yeah, because the, the small book session is moved so we have time there's no rush to complete at 11 so <laughs> yes mataji hari bol All right, so thank you all very much, uh, and we like to uh, uh, thank Abhinav Gauranga Prabhu. Very very wonderful session. Uh, like uh, like uh, devotees have already given you the next topic and the next <laughs> timing. So let's see how much it works out, uh, yeah. and we'll take it forward. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Very enlightening, and um, um, uh, I hope we are able to follow <laughs> what yes. you have mentioned in the class. So we seek the blessings of all the Vaishnavas and you, so that we can apply all of these uh, important teachings in our lives and progress in Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don't forget the link. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Thank you, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji.